Okay, welcome everybody. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we are recording. So if you'd like a copy of this uh, after it's done, just send me an email. I can send you a link to it. Uh, eventually, this will also be put up on YouTube so you can find it there. And welcome to Propagation, Propagating Tropical Fruit Using Grafting. So my name is Jeff Wasileski. I'm the Commercial Tropical Fruit Crops Extension Agent for University of Florida and Miami-Dade County. University of Florida has an extension office in every county, so I work in Miami-Dade. I know some of you are in other counties, so welcome. So welcome to Tropical Fruit Tuesdays at two. Today we're talking about grafting, and July 21st we'll be talking about proper planting. You'd be surprised how many groves I visit where the, the, the trees are put into the ground the wrong way. You only get one chance to plant, so make sure you do it the right way. We'll talk about that, and we'll talk about protecting young trees and things like that. August 4th, we'll talk about properly growing mangoes. And August 18th, we're going to talk about propagation by seed. So that's what's coming up. And just a word of inf where you can get information before we start talking about grafting. So where can you go? The first one I have there is called EDIS. EDIS is the University of Florida database, and it has uh, publications that are all peer reviewed. So I can write a fact sheet and put it online, but it doesn't have to be peer reviewed. But if I write an EDIS, it has to go through a lot of levels of, of review and e editing. So it's a much higher level of publication. So look for subjects there, you can just go to your web search site and type in EDIS space mango. You'll find a very good publication on mangoes or EDIS space avocado. Um, and you can put EDS space UF space avocado and that might make it easier to find. You can put an EDIS space tropical fruit propagation and you'll get this EDIS that is on your left of the screen. And that's when I wrote on propagation. So it'll have everything from cutting, seed, uh, air layers, which we talked about a few weeks ago, and grafting as well. And that's, of course, free online. You can get information from other universities. Oh, I see I put it there twice. Other universities, if you look at the fourth dash there, it's .edu. So if you search, let's say someone was looking for information on breadfruit, and we don't have that. For University of Florida, so I found something by typing in breadfruit space edu, and I was able to edu is for ed education. Those are um, universities that you find. So I found something from the University of Hawaii on breadfruit that was quite good. I was able to share that. So another place you can get good information because it's very visual is YouTube. Of course, you can get some bad information there as well. So I like to watch a couple videos on each subject and kind of bring all the information together. Um, for instance, my girlfriend's um, faucet broke on her kitchen sink. So she asked me to fix it. I was like, sure, no problem, easy. I had no idea how to do it. So I just went to YouTube, watch a few videos. It was fixed the next day. So it's very good. Another good place you can get information is Master Gardeners. Some of you are Master Gardeners. Some of you know Master Gardeners. Some of you train master gardeners. So that's a good place for information. The best spot I found is your own garden. What you see in your own garden or in your own grove, that is something that you always know is true. If you do it and it works, it can be done. And then finally, beware the source of where you get information. Sometimes there's, it's really easy to publish information that doesn't, uh, online, especially online, that doesn't, isn't actually great information, so just beware. Okay, so we're talking about propagation. We're talking about propagation by using grafting. And why do we propagate in the first place? One reason is to make more of what we have. Let's say we're trying to grow lychee trees to sell them. So we can take one big lychee tree, put air layers on it, that's a type of propagation, and we can come up with from that tree, 200 lychee trees that we can sell and make more. This second one is very important, to maintain a cultivar. So what does that mean? 
So if we think about mangoes, we have many different cultivars of mangoes. The cultivar or variety is the name. You have Edward mangoes, you have Kerry mangoes, you have Glen mangoes, you have Tommy Atkins mangoes. So all these different mangoes. So if you take one of those, let's say we take a Hayden mango and we take the seed and we plant the seed. When that grows up, it's not going to be a Hayden mango. It's going to be the mother is a Hayden, but the father is whatever pollinated it. So to maintain that cultivar, we have to propagate asexually, which would be by cuttings, by air layers, and what we'll talk about today, by grafting. So grafting, we actually take a piece of the Hayden and we attach it to a seedling mango. Then the top is a clone of the Hayden and the bottom are just young, strong, healthy roots. So we'll get into that. Another reason we would propagate is to get ahead of disease. Let's say you had a very special tree and it, it started getting sick. You could take a piece of it and graft it onto the same species and you could save that particular tree. Uh, and then of course we do it for profit, like I mentioned with to the first um, dash there, to make more, we do it so we can sell these, these um, tropical fruit or, or other things that we're propagating. And just so you know, guys, I'm watching the, the chat. So if you have questions as we go, you can put them into the chat. I'll try to answer them as we go. I think that will make it easier. And a lot of times your questions uh, are things that I forget to talk about. So it's really good that you have the questions at, those time, at that time because then I can add it in there. Okay, so types of propagation, I sort of uh, talked about this a little bit. We have sexual and asexual. Sexual is from seed. So from seed, it can take a long time to flower and fruit because it has to go through all the stages of sexual maturity. It has to be a young mango, then an older mango, and then finally a mango that's allowed to fruit. So it can take, let's say an avocado, you plant it from seed, it can take 15 years before it's able to fruit. But if you propagate that same avocado asexually, let's say you're propagating a Monroe avocado, you take a piece of a Monroe and you graft it into a seedling um, avocado, that piece at the top, that Monroe, it's already sexually mature. So it can flower right away. So that's another good reason to use grafting asexual propagation. If you look at the picture on the right, those are all mangoes that have been grafted. So where the um, rubber band is, that's where the top part, which is the part that we want to clone, is attached to the seedling. So all of those are probably the same cultivar of mango because they're all together. They probably have a tag somewhere that tells you what it is. Okay, so types of asexual propagation. We talked about seeds. Seeds are sexual, but for asexual, we have cuttings, air layers, which we talked about a month ago, division, Let's say you have a clump of banana trees and you divide them, you take one of them, that would be a clone of the mother plant, so that's asexual. Grafting, which we'll talk about today, and also tissue culture is a type of asexual propagation. Okay, so we're gonna have a quick, easy poll question here. I can pull it up, P-O-L-L. -L. Let's see, okay, take a look at this. So the difference between asexual and sexual propagation is, you can answer that. The last poll I did on pruning on the pretest, everybody got 100%, so that wasn't great. You guys are real smart. Okay, I'm gonna stop it there. We have a lot of answers. So I'm gonna share the results with you. You should be able to see that. So eight people picked one is from seed, one is not. Okay, that's correct, but it's not the correct answer. 
One is clonal, one is not. So that one is also correct. So it, the answer is A and B, which 15 people answer that. Well, that's really good. So one is from seed, one is not. That's correct. And also one is clonal, one is not. Clonal means you're making a clone of it. So that's asexual. See, asexual is not clonal. Uh, one is pseudosexual, one is not. I think I made that word up. I'm not sure. So it's not that. And then all of the above, it's not that because of the pseudosexual answer there. Okay, you guys did real well. You might see that question again. So be on the lookout for that at the end. Okay, so asexual characteristics. We've talked about some of these. They're fast. In other words, like from seed, I told you it can take 15 years before an avocado can fruit. Um, grafting, it will take just long enough for that tree to get big enough to hold fruit. I planted some avocados in our grove here at work uh, less than a year ago, and one of them already has fruit on it. They're very small. Uh, sometimes it's very easy, the asexual propagation. Asexual propagation of hog plums from cuttings are super easy. Um, grafting, I mean, uh, air layers are very easy. But sometimes asexual propagation is not easy, and that is pretty much uh, grafting. Grafting is not that easy. It really takes a lot of practice to do it. It is clonal, meaning if you take a piece of that Glen Mango and you graft it to a seedling, the whole top is going to be a clone of the Glen. So over the years, you keep the Glen Mango going by cloning it, by um, grafting it. And for the most part, not for division, but for, excuse me, everything else, asexual propagation is used with dicots. Okay, dicots are woody trees like avocado, mango, carambola, meme, lychee, longan, all these trees that we think of, but not bananas. Okay, so these are the different types. You have air layers. For air layers, it's good for lychees, longans, and guavas. Cuttings is spondia. Spondius is also called ceruela or hog plum or hocote. Division, bananas and pineapple. Now grafting. Grafting is just about everything else. Mango, avocado, sapodilla, carambola, jackfruit, canistel, many others. Could you graft lychee? Yes. Could you graft longan? Yes. Could you graft guava? Yes. Could you graft spondius? Yes. Um, remember, it's mostly for die cuts, so bananas you cannot graft, or pineapples. Uh, and then tissue culture, usually used for bananas. But you need a lab for that, so we're not going to try to do that. Okay, now let's get into grafting. General grafting information. And what we're looking at in this picture is a rootstock avocado, which is below the rubber band. Above the rubber band is whatever avocado we're trying to propagate. Let's say it is a Monroe. Now, what do we also see here? The seed is putting out multiple little seedlings or little buds from the one seed. So if we were to allow those to grow, would they be Monroe? Anybody want to put that into the chat? Matthew, good answer. He says no, they would not. They're from the seed. They're from the seedling. So we have to make sure to cut those off and only let the top grow. We have to be on the lookout for that. So general grafting information. Oh, Julieta has just a very good question. She's very smart. She says, are these polyembryonic? So polyembryonic is when a seed has many embryos and some of them are clonal. So they're not Julieta, so Matthew's question would be correct, but that's a very intelligent question. Okay, so general grafting information. It is difficult. It's not easy to do, but number two, practice makes perfect. So the more you practice, the better you get at it. When you propagate using grafting, the material should be healthy. What material is that? So the first thing you're going to need is a rootstock. 
The rootstock is a young, healthy seedling of the same species that you're trying to propagate. So you put mango onto mango, avocado onto avocado, carambola onto carambola, jackfruit onto jackfruit, et cetera, et cetera. Now within the genus, like sapo, or rather um, mame and canistel are so closely related that you could graft a canistel onto a mame because they both have the same genus, Puteria. But for the most part, you're putting carambola on carambola, jackfruit on jackfruit, et cetera, et cetera. So those are your rootstocks, the young, healthy seedlings. And you're usually going to graft those when they're about the size of a pencil. Uh, Rocio Rocchio is saying, when you say young, how young? Usually they're about a year old, the, the rootstock. They can be older, but usually they're about a year old. If you look at this one in the picture, that one's probably the width of a pencil, which is probably about a year old or, more, or a little older, but it's in a one gallon container. Um, then you have, so that's the rootstock. Now that piece that I keep talking about that you take and you put it onto the rootstock, that is called a scion, S-C-I-O-N, or it's also called budwood. And that scion or budwood should be very healthy. It should be green. You should take it from the tree. It should be about um, four to five inches. And if you really have it the way you want it, the buds on the root on the uh, budwood or scion are swollen up, but they haven't come out yet. Those are perfect, ready to, to graft. They're kind of swollen, but they haven't popped out yet. So those are great to, to use. When you take the um, budwood, you cut it off, you put it in a Ziploc bag to keep the moisture in. It's very important to keep the moisture. Um, we have a question from Michael. Can a graft a mango cutting to a mature avocado or a mame tree? If not, what else may work? So sorry, Michael, mango has to go on to mango, avocado to avocado, and mame to mame. So just, that's the way you gotta do it. Nothing else is gonna work for you. Um, oh, okay, so the rootstock and the scion. I talked about the rootstock should be about the size of a pencil. The scion or the budwood should be about the same width. Same width. I, when I say the size of a pencil, I'm talking about the width. So the width of a pencil, for the rootstock and the scion, that makes it easier, the same size. Maintain hydration, that's um, what I was talking about when you take the budwood, when you cut it off the mother tree, let's say you're gonna do that Glen Mango and you take a bunch of pieces of Glen Mango so you can graft them, uh, you put them into a Ziploc bag and you keep them hydrated. Now you're not gonna put that Ziploc bag in your car and let it sit there because then they're gonna heat up. And usually you're going to do grafting in the growing season. What is the growing season? It's now. It's when it's warm, it's rainy, it's humid, everything's growing. Now's the best time to do it. Um, the one that you do sort of in the non-growing season in the winter is avocados. And if you go and look up that edis that I showed you, the one on propagation, in the back there's a chart of all the different um, tropical fruit and it, it tells you the best way to propagate them and the best time of year to propagate them. So it's a very handy chart. Uh, we have a good um, bit of information from Dr. Stephen Green. He says um, most citrus are graft compatible. That's how you get multi-variety trees, lemon and lime and orange, etc. So that is true. So citrus can get sort of mixed around within the same rootstock. Okay, and aftercare is crucial. So once you put these two pieces together and you graft them, what happens after that is very important. Because if you just take that and put it on the sun and don't water it, it's gonna have all kinds of problems. Okay, so you wanna, once you graft it, you wanna put it somewhere where it's not too hot, but it's getting indirect light, and you wanna make sure that you water the container. Like if we look at this container right here in this picture, we can see it's a little dry. So I would stick my finger in there. If it was dry, I would water it. 
if I stuck my finger in there it was moist, I would not water it. But we need to keep it moist, but not completely wet. Okay, so here we have a picture of many different, mostly avocados here, it looks like, that have been grafted. So you can see the rootstock. You can see some rubber band that holds it together. And then you have this tape around it. This is called parafilm. It's a sort of a really thin waxy substance that keeps in the moisture once you've put them together. And you can see in the back, some of them are sprouting out and they're pushing right through that parafilm. If you look right here where I have my mouse, you see something extraordinary. Those are flowers, leaves and flowers that are coming out. So what I told you about these being sexually mature and ready to flower fruit right away, that one's already flowering. Obviously it can't hold the fruit, it's too small, but that just proves the point there. Now something else you see in this picture, which is very important, are all these tags. See all these tags? Because these are probably different avocados. Even if they're all the same, it's good to tag them so we know what they are. Because if you, if you propagate, let's say three different avocados on one day, and then you don't tag them, and you don't know what they are, that's pretty much worthless to you because you have a Monroe, you have a Simmons, you have a Choquette, but you don't know which is which. So if you want to give away the Monroe, you can't because you don't know which is which. So always tag your propagations. Okay, so why does grafting work? What is it about this technique that makes it work? Okay, if you look at the picture on the right, we're looking at a woody dicot, a little piece that's probably the scion that has been cut. So what we see here, where that arrow is pointing, that's called the cambium. Outside of the arrow here, that's called the phloem, which we see if we look into this, this is a, a cutting of a dicot from the top. So you, here you see the cork, the cortex, the primary phloem, the secondary phloem, all of that is this right here, this phloem. Then the cambium right here, it says, whoops, excuse me. Right there, it says vascular cambium. Look how thin it is. It's a very thin layer of cells. Then inside you have all the xylem or wood. So here we have late wood, early wood, pith, it's all called xylem, okay? So what the cambium does is it creates more phloem and more xylem. So that's why you get the rings of a tree because the xylem grows over time. The phloem is sort of like the bark, so it sloughs off. But this cambium can grow and it can, it can do some amazing things. So let's say we cut open a rootstock and we cut open a budwood and we put them together but we made the cambiums touch, and then we sealed it all up. Those cambiums can actually grow together and then allow the plant to become one. So the xylem, which is in the middle of the tree where water goes up to the leaves, can connect. And on the outside, the phloem, where energy goes down to the roots, that can connect, all because these two cambiums have worked together. So that's why it works. Okay, so not only are we gonna need a rootstock and we're gonna need a budwood or scion, we're also gonna need a grafting knife. A grafting knife is different from a regular knife because it's super, super sharp. You have to keep it very sharp. So you're gonna, you're gonna to, um, sharpen it maybe every two times or three times that you use it. The other thing is here, if you look at this knife, this is a right-handed grafting knife. How do I know that? Because I see this little bevel, which if you think about a knife in your kitchen, it has two bevels, right? It comes to a point. A grafting knife will have a bevel on one side, but the other side, the back will be flat. Now you need that flat part and the bevel because you don't want to dig into the plant when you graft. 
Now, grafting knives are available online. You can get them. You can get a good one for probably $15, $20. And you can just keep, keep it in good shape. Okay, so you need a knife. You're going to need budwood. This is someone who's taking some budwood of an avocado tree. So she's cut off the tip here, and now she's going to cut off these leaves. You see the budwood is probably about four or five or five or six inches. And we're going to talk first about a cleft graft. We're going to talk about a veneer graft and a cleft graft. So this is a cleft graft. So she's taken this budwood and at the bottom she cut a V. Not with the pruners but with the grafting neck. The pruners she just cut it off now she cut a V. So this side is cut and the other side is cut too. So it's a V, which you can see right there. You see that V? That's what she cut. So this V, if we look at it, this looks strikingly familiar to that diagram I showed you, right? You have the xylem in the middle, the phloem, and then you can't really see where it is, but we know the cambium is sort of here. So if we can get this cambium to touch the cambium on the rootstock and then seal it up, we can get that to grow together and we'll have a successful graft. Okay, so this is cleft graft. So we make this V on the budwood. Then on the rootstock, we actually chop off the top of the rootstock. And then we take our knife and we push it right down the middle. So we're also, we're creating a Y. So we have a V and a Y. The V is going to fit right into the Y. Just like that. So you can see that this um, scion is just a little bit wider than the rootstock, which isn't ideal, but it's not terrible. It can still work. So you have that V in there. You have the Y. And you can see the left part of the Y is a little thinner than the one on the right. That's okay. You can also put it right down the middle. Now what we want to do here is wrap this up so it's, it's airtight, so water cannot escape. So the way we're going to do that, she used a rubber band. You can use a rubber band or you can also use grafting tape, which I'll show you a picture of in a minute. But after you put the rubber band, then she's going to put something called parafilm M. This is grafting tape, by the way. It's just plastic tape. She could use that to seal this entire thing up all the way to the top, or she could use a rubber band with parafilm. This is parafilm. Um, you can get it out of the line as well. And each one of these strips, you would take off the plastic, and then below that, there's a, a very thin film that you can wrap around. I think I have a picture of it right here. Yeah, so this is parafilm. So she wrapped it with a uh, rubber band and then all the way up with parafilm. So this is very stretchy and it's watertight. And once the buds start to swell and come out of here, they'll actually pop through there. Um, Julieta is asking, is it better to cut the scion and then cut the leaves or cut the leaves and leave the scion on the tree until it buds before cutting it? Oh, Julieta, you're so smart. Yes, so one way you can do it is like I showed you where you cut the, um, the, the budwood off and then you cut the leaves and then you have it. Or there's another way, which is what Julieta is referring to, where you prepare the budwood. So you go to the tree, you mark the one that you're going to do. You put a little tape there, a little tree tape, so you know which one it is. Then in that little area, the first six inches, you cut off all the leaves. What that will make the tree do is start to swell up the buds. So once they swell up, before they come out, you cut them and then you have your budwood prepared just the way you like it. Now the danger of that is if you wait too long, the buds will pop out. And another one is if you don't mark that, you won't be able to refine that, that um, branch that easily. But um, good question, Julieta. Okay, that was a cleft graft. Now, there's many types of grafts, but we're just going to talk about cleft and veneer. So the second one is veneer. The first one we did it with avocados. Second one, we're going to do it with, uh, this is a jackfruit. 
Cecilia asks, how much time do you have between cutting budwood and mating to the rootstock? That's a good question. And you have more time than you probably think. If you keep the budwood uh, in a Ziploc bag and you don't get it too hot or too cold, it'll probably last a good three weeks. Now it's better if you graft it right away. The, lo the quicker you do it, the better, but it can last a while. Okay, so veneer graft, what she's doing here, she cut her budwood there, and now she's going to, on the rootstock, now instead of cutting off the entire top like we did with a cleft, she's going to take a thin slice, a veneer of this seedling. She's going to slice it off. And here, remember, you have your knife. It has a cutting edge on one side, but it's flat on the other. That's perfect for this because we're going to want a nice flat area. The flatter you can go, the better. So she's going to cut off the phloem, leave the xylem, and by leaving the xylem, she leaves a ring of cambium on the outside. So it's going to look like this. Well, this is the budwood, and she's taken off the, a thin veneer layer of the budwood as well. If you look in the background there, you can see that the rootstock has been taken off a veneer layer. So we're exposing the cambium here and there. And if you look in the back, she made this little cut to make it a little wedge like that. That wedge is gonna fit in right there. So what we did we, on the rootstock, we took a veneer all the way down, cut, and then we sliced the last sort of half inch to leave that little flap. And that little flap fits in with this little back cut that she made there. That little flap is more just to hold it into place. So there you have the little flap. You have the, the little back cut. You have both of these have taken a nice thin veneer off. Now we're gonna wrap this up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the veneer on the rootstock and on the or on the rootstock and on the budwood should be about the same length and the same width, the cuts. Okay, then she used again rubber band to tie this up. You could also use um, the, the grafting tape. And she used rubber band here. Now you could do a rubber band and then go ahead and wrap it with grafting tape or parafilm or do what she's going to do here, which is, well, before she does that, she cuts off the top of the rootstock like this, because this is the part we want to grow. And you can see this is not ideal because the rootstock is much smaller than the scion. The scion's a lot bigger, but that will still work. And then instead of using parafilm, she put a bag around it, which also will hold the, um, the moisture inside. I prefer the parafilm of, of, of all the different methods. I think parafilm is really good or the tree tape. So this would be maybe my third favorite on the list, but it is a technique that you can use. And that is the veneer graft. Okay, and then here we see, I believe this is a black sapote, chocolate pudding fruit. And what we're looking at is this one's already grafted and re-sprouted. So here you see what was the um, scion or budwood. Here you see the rootstock on the left. There you see they're, they're grafted together very nicely. And you have a new plant. And one of the reasons you would graft a black sapote is because those trees are either male or female. So if you grow them from seed and you have a male and you let it get big and you, you're never going to get fruit because it's a male. So you have one that you know it's a female, you take a seedling and you graft them together, then you know you're going to get fruit. Okay, more questions. How to maintain the hygiene of the plant after grafting? So to keep it clean, after you've grafted it, once it's all sealed up, it's going to stay pretty clean. You don't need to worry too much about it. But remember, you're going to put it in an area that's getting not full sun, but not 
um, no sun, so sort of dappled light. I'm gonna keep it wet, but not, or moist, but not really wet. Um, and then you wait until you see those buds start to come out. Now, if you've done it with grafting tape, the buds cannot push through the grafting tape. So you have to pay attention to when you see those buds and then you take your knife and you cut a little hole for them to come out. Um, another question, how long does it take for the buds to break through? So that's usually about two weeks, maybe a little longer. Now, if your scion or your budwood starts to turn black, then you know your graft probably didn't take. If it stays green, keep it on there for as long as you can until you see those buds. Okay, let's finish up with a poll question here. We have, oops. Oh, there we go, number two. Okay, the difference between asexual and sexual propagation is Okay, we've got some good answers coming in so far. So the difference between asexual and sexual, sexual propagation is one is from seed, one is not. One is clonal, one is not. One is pseudosexual, one is not. Both A and B, the first two, or all of the above. So I'm gonna share the results. And almost perfect class here. We got 26 people that said both A and B. One person said one is from C, one is not. They probably came in late, so we'll forgive them for getting that wrong. So that is correct, but it's also one is clonal, one is not. So it would be A and B. So they say teaching the test doesn't work, but here's proof that it does. Very good job, guys. Okay, so to wrap it up, general grafting information. Remember, it's difficult, you gotta practice. I see Mr. Fritz here, he's taught many grafting classes. He's a very good grafter, I don't know why he's taking this class. He's better than me for sure. See him laughing there. Um, but he's just a lifetime student, that's why he's here. Practice makes perfect, Mr. Fritz will tell you that. Uh, material should be healthy, your rootstock and your scion. They should be about the same size, the same width. You want to maintain the hydration of the rootstock, I mean of the scion. You usually do it in the growing season and after care is crucial. Okay, so there's my contact information. Most of you probably got information about this from an email from me. If you did it and you want to get on my email list, that's my email there, sflhort at ufl.edu. You can email me, ask to get on my list. You can also email me if you want a, a link to a, a video of this uh, recording. Okay, we have a few more questions uh, from Amy. When you do a veneer graft, how can you keep the rootstock side of the stem from re-sprouting? Uh, well, one way, Amy, is if you noticed, uh, we cut off the top, so that helps. And then if you see any buds coming from the rootstock, you just cut them out. You don't let them come out. And then once the top really starts growing, the bottom will no longer try to sprout. But that's a good question. Okay. So this was supposed to be 45 minutes, and we're right at 2.44. We have, okay, we have another question from Bridget. For carambola, can you start a plant from seed, which will become the rootstock and add a scion from the mature tree? Yes, that was a good, that's a good thing to talk about is how do you get your rootstocks? You can really just grow these plants from seed and those can be your rootstocks. Now, if you're doing a big commercial planting, you're gonna use turpentine, mango seedlings, and you're gonna use probably Walden seedlings for avocado. 
But if you're just doing this just to do a few plants, you can just grow a mango seed and then graft onto that. Grow a carambola seed, graft onto that, your carambola. Um, some more questions. Uh, Louise King, who could also teach this class and has taught this class, says, thank you, thank you, Louise, for coming. Ulietta says we'll be hosting a hands-on lab session anytime in the future. Ulietta, every year I have done a propagation class that's limited to 20 people, where we do all the techniques and then we do everything hands-on. Mr. Fritz has sat in that class as well, even though he could teach it. Um, so as soon as we kind of get the clear, once COVID has kind of blown out a little bit, I'd love to do that. We will be doing that. And I'll send that out when I do do it via email. Now that class I do charge for, but uh, it's well worth it because you get to take home everything. Okay, so I don't see any more questions. So I want to thank you guys for coming. And oh wait, there are some more. Uh, okay, if you guys would read what Steve Green wrote there, he's a candidate on the August 18th August ballot or. Eight, August 18th ballot for the Redland Community Council. He asked for your vote and your support. Keep Redland green. Get it, Steve Green. Uh, you can click on that link there. There's a 20 second video. I'm just reading what I see, people. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, Sonia says, is it required to fertilize during grafting? No, it's not. You probably shouldn't fertilize. You should have your root stacks in rootstocks in good shape, but I wouldn't be fertilizing while you're doing the crafting. Um, you're welcome, everybody. You're welcome. You are welcome. Okay, thank you guys for coming so much. And um, I will see you at Tropical Fruit Tuesdays at 2 in two weeks from now. Bye, guys. <laughs>